Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, the offseason's going. The colleges, the college football season's over. So now we got the Senior Bowl. We got a lot of these prospects coming up, and we're taking a look at them. Um, so we're, let's dive into the Senior Bowl. But m- mainly, oh, mainly our um, – some of our coaches over there and Jennifer King over there and Ryan Kerrigan and some other guys like, yeah. Yeah. So the senior bowl is happening right now, in Mobile, Alabama, they're doing some of their, you know, their organized practices and whatnot. And uh, we're getting a really close look. We've got our scouts are down there. Uh, Martin Mayhew, Marty Herney, and um, Eric Stokes, another one of our, our uh, scouting directors, plus a couple of the other area college scouts are all down there. So they're all looking, but we've got three coaches run assistant running backs coach Jennifer King, assistant defensive line coach Ryan Kerrigan, and assistant offensive line coach Travell Warden, all Mm. participating and coaching these these guys out there, which Mm. I think that that's a a huge advantage. One, it's it's a great coaching opportunity for them. It's a great networking opportunity uh, for them. I mean, this is, you know, we talk about in the league when when coaches get hired, how much connections there are and, you know, and who do they know? And and, how is it that a coach can get hired by one team and have a whole staff assembled in like days, you know, right. so these guys all know each other, you know, and they meet each other through this stuff. So, so that's a great opportunity for them, but for our team and getting better, this is a firsthand look at some of the positions that we have some needs, Yeah. Um. you know, with Ryan Kerrigan coaching these, these defensive linemen, what if we need a defensive tackle? Cause we right. lose Deron Payne. What if we need to be drafting a replacement for Montez Sweat or Chase Young or both down the line and we need to get someone a little early uh jennifer king you know as much as we love jd mckissick what if we you know we need to move on from him and we need another running back in in the room um and so having her there the one that's most valuable that stood out to me was the the line coach the offensive line coach in there because we said we We need need to improve our offensive line i'm pretty sure one of the draft picks that we made last year was at the senior bowl and impressed people and that's why we drafted him so it's really important for he keeps going to be able to find people that we may say we need to target him early, or he may be able to say this guy who's not on people's radars is going to be, is a good player. He played really well. We should target him late as one of those cam curl type players. Yes. You know, I think I was looking at, and I, I heard it earlier this week, they're talking about the senior bowl and the importance for our team is Ron Rivera likes seniors. Cause he likes mm-hmm. that. They may be a little bit more game ready in in some aspects or, you know, they or they could be maybe a little bit more mature. They've been in college for a few years. They're a little bit older. So he's a big proponent of it. In fact, I I believe last year, five of of his of his picks attended the senior bowl. So this is something that while they're just going on right now, we're going to want to keep track of some of these reports because our next draft picks could be among these guys and, you know, some of these, the folks that we're going to be targeting. So I think we want to really be watching what happens here, you know, throughout this week and some of the reports that come out afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Will, what, what uh, positions are we looking for? I know we, you and I have talked about it. One being tight end that we definitely had a bunch of guys underachieving Logan, um, Logan Thomas, just, he's not back yet. Maybe hopefully next year we'll see what happens. But then you also have linebacker. We've been talking about that for two years now. You just mentioned O-line. Secondary is huge. You also mentioned, you mentioned running back, but as wide receiver, I know you talked about that earlier, that potentially a wide receiver. I mean, we've talked about, we're not interested in keeping Cam Sims, but we do need that big body. And if our tight ends aren't going to be those big bodies, then we might need to look at somebody in wide receiver. So, is wide receiver one of those things that we should be looking into? I think absolutely. I mean, like you know, you never know if some of those skull, smaller school guys, what they may be, someone that kind of you know slips in the draft because of who their competition was. I mean, honestly, you know, you also get to the point in the draft, whether that's your first round, second round, or just the rest of the time, is you go best player available, and it's yeah. important to, to find you know some of these guys. Um, you know, I know one is this is going to be a little shout out to my alma mater, but they said. Shepard has a quarterback down there that they said what? is is pretty talented. And, you know, Jim Nagy, that who's like the senior bull guru, said he's like, I want to see this kid play against D1 competition because he's got tools. Yeah. People are just going to be scared of him because who he played with. He's like, he could be someone that that is a draft and develop down the line. 
you know, right. so so that's you know, so it, it absolutely. I, I don't think there's any position that's off the table, you know, necessarily. But you know, some of the the, the coaches we have down there are at positions where hey, we really need you to be t- paying attention to who stands out to you. You know, we could yeah. use some upgrades there. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, now I will say this: I wanted to say all draft picks are crapshoot. I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that sometimes if you're able to fit these guys in the system and you're in, have pieces already in place, you can work it out. But if the guy is in there and he's supposed to be the changer by himself and you didn't have stuff to begin with, it, it could be a crapshoot. We'll see. And especially, yeah. you know, quarterbacks. A lot of that stuff is dependent on the system to yeah. see. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll definitely see. But I mean, are there any names? Uh, that you're looking at i know for we were talking about different positions i know for me you one of the positions you mentioned is running back you know ryan robinson took a lot on him this last year and he didn't even play the full uh complement of games then you on top of that gibson he was injured later in the season so it's kind of like we know gibson's more nimble more you know swift get him in space robinson's our bruiser maybe do we look at maybe another bruiser uh, a couple guys that crossed my mind were somebody like a, a chase brown from illinois you know mm. a big name running back or um oh what's that I, it, it left my mind just as soon as it popped in there but i looking at somebody that can carry the rock and and take uh, potentially take carries away from Robinson, but give him a breather. Obviously, the injury, the whole gunshots and all that stuff to, to the leg, it's – we were always on kind of borrowed time with it because it's like eventually it's going to it's gonna show it, it rears ugly head. And towards the end of the season, you you saw how – I mean, he was really, really took a toll on him. So in order – just like what we did for Gibson, let's bring in somebody to maybe – take some, you know, give some carries to somebody else to get them, get them a little, um, you know, keep them fresh. Because like you said, McKissick and, I mean, Jonathan Williams maybe, and then you got, you know, uh, Patterson. These guys are all, mm, they're not even stop gaps. They're just guys, okay, bring them in. Let's bring them in for preseason. Let's see what they got. And it's great if we get anything from them, but we're not expecting it. Why not bring in for the for those three guys? You bring in a Chase Brown. Just bring in somebody that can run the rock consistently and has fresh young legs. You know, so that's one of the guys I'm looking at at running back. Are there any guys along the line, tight end, maybe from your from your school, uh, Maryland, <laughs> that you may be thinking about? Yeah, <laughs> look, look how excited you get. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, Maryland has, has good good skills players. Who was the best tight end in, in the NFL? Rookie tight end oh in the NFL goodness. last year. Oh my! Who called goodness. it? Who called it on this show? Maryland. This guy. What? What? What, what, what happened to your? Whatever happened to your guy? Uh, Funk for the Rams. Whatever happened to him? Well, he tore his ACL. You know. Yeah. I don't know. If they ever, <laughs> I don't know what happened there, brother. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um. So I will. I don't have names necessarily that I'm going in that I'm curious about. Um, so I will be most interested in the reports afterwards of who flashed. Yeah. Um, but I am very much interested in the offensive line, in particularly the tackles, yeah. to see if that's a possibility in the first round or if there's somebody else. Um, <laughs> finally, some ram talk. <laughs> um, that I'm also interested in the in the corners, you know, yeah. corners and linebackers. Those are the you know offensive line, corner, and linebacker are like the three positions I want to see us make some improvements on and and through the draft. And so that I'll just be kind of looking out there. I did hear one of the. You're, you're right. I, I like to see how players from South Carolina do, from Maryland, and from Wisconsin because those are about the three schools mostly that I, I follow in college. Um, and there's a player in, from Wisconsin. Uh, the defensive tackle Keanu Benton, that okay. they said it's just he's been unblockable right now. So like I hear that, I'm like, do we need Drum Payne? Do we Come need on, Drum right? Do we what? Do we use our third round compensatory, fourth round pick for Benton? And and what I think is so interesting on here is this is the part where like what we don't know is what scouts see and how that changes their big board. Exactly. Because I can remember from from the uh, the Senior Bowl. We found a couple names that we liked. We re- we really liked it. Troy Anderson um, mm-hmm. that we talked about. There was a there was a few other names who were like, oh man, these are some some good players. And when we would do these mock drafts, they would be available in the third round, in the fourth round, in the fifth round, and you could just wait, wait, wait. Oh, there, got my guy there that I wanted the right, whole time. Right. And then come the actual NFL draft, Troy Anderson, second round. 
Leo Chanel, third round. Wick, like, you yeah. know, what's the, what's the dude? Chad Muma, second round. Mm-hmm. You know, so like these scouts saw something that like they really they value the senior bowl. It's not yeah. just Ron Rivera's stat. The other scouts really do value what they see there and and go after it and and pick those guys earlier based on what they saw. So uh it, it just always makes for what you know that the draft is such as as uh as Scott said, it's it's a crapshoot, you know, in the draft on where people are gonna go and you really have no idea what people are valuing. So it's just fun to kind of get a chance to know some of these guys. Oh yeah. And and ladies and gentlemen the first today was the first day of senior bowl practice. So these guys are still getting it in there you know they're still learning the system and trying to figure out i mean a lot of times these guys are taken out of their comfort which has been whatever regime whatever offense they've been running and they're put into here and just hey go let's you know what can you do so there's a couple guys that maybe in some of the the positions we're looking at that i have kind of looked at uh over time um for one obviously i know you're not a texas fan i am they have a linebacker named the 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 marvion overshone he really showed up in that Alabama game where he was blowing up the middle. He was really uh, congesting that running game and everything like that. Another okay. guy it, uh, was called Carlton Marshall. He transferred to Troy a, a year ago and led, I believe he was at like Arkansas state before led them in tackles came to Troy as like a second team all American. I think if not a uh, first team all American, one of these guys that's kind of, gonna fall a couple you know I mean, we'll see how he does you know with everything that's going on but he was one of those guys when you look at on tape every every time they ran the ball every play they, he was always in the play he was always one of the first guys there to get the tackle to blow up the play to do that so having some like of that, that where it's it's more of a read react where he can just move mm-hmm. we'll definitely see i like that um also for wide receiver we would talk about that height two guys that i've been looking at all year um, one didn't really do great. One did a lot better. Actually, both of them did a lot better the year before. Um, Dontavion Hicks out of UVA. He's a big six foot four wide receiver. Balled out a year ago when he had he, uh, Brendan Armstrong was a quarterback. And I mean, he he got him and another guy on that Virginia wide receiver get, uh, staff had over a thousand yards Ooh. and Armstrong was throwing it all over the place. And then the other guy is Brock Purdy's old, old buddy, Xavier uh, Xavier and Hutchinson out of mm. Iowa State, bigger guy, bigger body, can move up and down the field, could definitely take the top off, but a big body that we can use potentially in the red zone. Yeah. So, again, this is this is the first couple of days of practice. We're not really seeing much. Kind of looking at some of these bigger, taller corners and safeties, you know, what, what can they do? How can they move? You know what I mean? Like, can they play zone? Can they fit in our system, kind of what we run? So, I love that they're all out there and we will definitely see, you know, kind of what happens um, going forward. Yeah. You, you named some really promising names there and you, you're seeing exactly what we need to be going after is looking at some running backs, looking at some of the, uh, you know, the big body wide receivers that were lacking on our team. And to Nate's point there, when he talked about in the comments that tight end needs to be a position of focus is the fact that the guys that we thought were going to be the, basketball player box out get position type plays out there didn't turn out to be so well if our tight ends aren't going to do it let's we got to get it from somewhere yeah Mm. i would love to hear uh scott you're in the comments tell me a little bit more about um why you think stetson stetson bennett's going to be so uh so successful in the nfl i'm I'm curious of that well he's got he's got a couple in here because first he said stets is going to be a star Okay. Then he said Caleb's going to be a bust. Mm. Ooh. Hot. Ooh. Come on now. And then at yeah. this one, Ramsey's going to be traded for a first-round pick. Who do you think the Rams should take uh, with the cap space? You think he's going to get a first-round pick? I don't know. I know he's I know he's normally he a lockdown corner. Yeah. yeah. But that but was before. He's been getting burned a couple years as ago. of late. Um, I, you know what? I – who knows? What do you guys need? You guys need a lot of work. You guys need a lot of help over there at, uh, uh, with the Rams. Do they so, or do they just need to get healthy? I, I don't. I don't know them all that well enough. I'll be I don't. I don't know that they're running. I, I, they're running game. I'm. I'm very questionable about the running game with Henderson and Acres. That's never really got back to. We don't know if Stafford's going to come back and be the guy you know, after the Mayfield. injury, huh? Yeah, Baker Mayfield in there. He did see just this fine. guy. See this guy, Scott. <laughs> this guy. This guy's advocating for Baker Mayfield. All right. <laughs> You know, but I don't know. We'll see because again, like 
you know, Cooper Cup. A lot of depends on if Cooper, Cooper Cup can come back and be healthy, you know? Right, right. But I think that's it. Yeah, you never – I don't think they've been the yes. same since after the Super Bowl. Big Wit left. And then, obviously, I know um, – what's the name that went to the Bills? Who used to play for the um, – th- not where. The defensive and edge rusher. Or Von Miller. Von Miller. He got hurt, yeah. but that was definitely a big issue. Uh, on their deep. So there, there's a lot of things that they need, yeah. but I, health might be the number one thing. So definitely Scott be looking at the senior bowl, looking at some of these guys because the big name contracts, I see Nate said talking about free agency. Yeah. We're going to be looking at free agency see, see soon, but if you can get a guy that could be a starter or a solid rotational piece out on a rookie contract, that's ideal. Right. You know, always that's, that's definitely what we're looking for. Thanks for watching. If you like that clip, be sure to check out the other great content from the Let's Talk Football community. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when more great content like this becomes available.